So the world's most complicated car HVAC system. Yes, it belongs to the RAV4 Prime and the RAV4 Prime took that title from the Prius Prime. Go figure. Before we get started in this video, I want to say one thing. I highly encourage you that you watch the rest of the series, especially the Prius Prime video, which I went into a little bit more depth in, into the heat pump system. It will help you better understand this video. Having said that, we're going to talk about how the heat pump system works in the RAV4 Prime and what changed from the Prius Prime to the RAV4 Prime. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos if you are a returning subscriber. Well, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So the RAV4 Prime, kind of like the Prius Prime, has the same dilemma. You, you are in EV mode, how are you going to heat the cabin? You're in the middle of the winter, there's no heat from the engine, how are you going to heat the cabin? So you have the uh, heat pump system, but the heat pump system in the RAV4 Prime is anything but conventional. So it's a complicated heat pump system. And to add more complication to that, the battery is also refrigerant cooled. So now you not only have to heat the cabin, cool the cabin in EV mode, you also have to cool the battery. So let's start from the beginning. Here's what the heat pump system can do. It can cool the cabin, it can heat the cabin, it could heat the cabin in heavy duty mode where when the temperatures drop really low and get closer to that 14 degree where everything just shuts off and it can longer longer heat and it turns on the engine. So having said that, we already talked about the Prius Prime and we said how everything works and how mega complicated it was. But they had to change even more for the RAV4 Prime to accommodate first for the, for the battery and they actually to make things more compact and easier to manufacture and more efficient. So here's the main change between the RAV4 Prime and the Prius Prime. Prius Prime used an inside condenser. So it had a third radiator, if you would, other than the evaporator and the heater core inside the car and that produced heat when you were in EV mode. Well, the RAV4 Prime doesn't have that. It only has an evaporator and a heater core. It does use coolant to heat the cabin. But when the engine is off, how are you going to heat that coolant? Aha, here's when things went crazy. They are using a liquid cooled condenser. So there is a small little device that hot refrigerant passes through it and coolant, engine coolant, passes through it as well. And there's a heat exchange. So basically they are warming up the coolant, not using the engine, but using the hot refrigerant from the heat pump system. Now let's start with the coolant circuit and how that works. So you have a three-way valve that separates the engine coolant circuit from the heat pump coolant circuit, if you would. Let's call it that. When the engine is running, it has an electric water pump. It generates heat. It warms the coolant and then that electric water pump cycles the coolant through the heater core, through the radiator, through everything else that it does, through that three-way valve that now it knows the engine is running and is doing all that. But when you're in EV mode, that three-way valve is going to change where now your, your circuit of coolant is going from your heater core inside the car back to that liquid condenser and it just cycles and it has another water pump that cycles the coolant separate from the engine water pump because we don't want to waste our heat on warming up an engine that is not going to run so it's going to cycle the coolant in that way but the, this is somewhat simple it is not extremely i mean electric water pumps have been used there's nothing crazy there but the craziness happens is how we are cooling or warming up that coolant when the engine is off so it's a normal heat pump system. We talked about AC, refrigerant goes from the compressor, refrigerant is a cool, has cool properties where the more pressure it has, the more temperature it has, the lower pressure, the lower temperature, and it has a very good heat transfer. That's how refrigerant works. So in a normal car's AC, just as a refresher, the compressor compresses the refrigerant at high pressure, high temperature, and then we create a restriction. That restriction drops the pressure, also drops the temperature. Remember the properties of the Freon? And that cold charge now 
goes into the evaporator, absorbs the heat from the air coming through it, and now drops the temperature of that air going into the cabin, which is now cold, and then recycles, goes to the condenser, gets cooled down, and the cycle repeats. Very simple, life is simple there. Nothing simple about the heat pump system. In an essence, the heat pump system flips that cycle, gets the hot refrigerant inside to cool, to heat, and the cold refrigerant in the condenser outside to absorb heat. But here's where things are different, because we're not exactly using the refrigerant to heat the cabin when we flip this operation. We are using it to warm up the coolant, which then goes to the heater core, and it provides heat to the cabin. I hope you are following me here because this gets a little, the heat pump system in itself is a little complicated, but when you add that little twist with the coolant, it just gets like, what's going on here? Let's simplify it. There are a few modes of operation and let's try to follow the mode of operation and what's going on with the refrigerator. So it all starts with the compressor. The compressor is electric, of course. It's gonna pressurize the Freon. So now we have high temperature, high pressure. Now that refrigerant that is now hot goes to the liquid condenser. Now we are heating up the coolant. After it heats up the coolant, it's gonna lose some heat. It's gonna circle back and go back to the outside condenser. But before it reaches it, because remember, it's gonna be, we're trying to absorb as much heat as possible. It's already cold outside. We're trying to absorb as much heat as possible. It's gonna create another restriction before it goes to the condenser outside the car, the one like in front of your radiator, it's gonna create a pressure drop. So now we drop the pressure, we drop the temperature, because if you just send that hot refrigerant, which is somewhat hot now, outside, it's not gonna absorb anything because it's, it's cold outside. So it's gonna drop it, so it's very cold, and when it goes here, let's say it's 30 degrees outside, you drop it to 20 degrees, it's gonna absorb that 10 degrees, it's gonna absorb a little bit, and that's how this, these systems are able to do that. And then that's gonna go back, it has a little tank, because now we're talking about low temperatures here, and low pressures, and, and that, that Freon turns into a liquid very easily be, when it cools down. So you have a little tank that absorbs that, so it wouldn't lug the compressor, and that cycle goes on. Now, when you need dehumidification, it's gonna send some of that to the evaporator, some of the cold refrigerant to the evaporator, so you have dehumidification, just like when you turn your AC in the winter to defog the windows, nothing crazy there. But when it comes to the battery, we are in the middle of this whole operation, we need to cool the battery. It's actually gonna send high pressure refrigerant and high temperature refrigerant to the battery, which is the opposite of what you might think. It's not sending cold, cool, nice refrigerant. It's gonna send hot refrigerant to the battery. But at the battery, there are two restrictions, two ex little expansion valves that drop the pressure and therefore drops the temperature. And that's what cools the battery and that goes back and goes back into the whole circuit. There's also two modes of operation. There's the low duty where it just cycles the refrigerant and life's good, but when you're in heavy duty mode, when the temperature is really low, it's actually gonna split that and it's gonna split the gas from the liquid. The gas will be recycled, the liquid will go to, to absorb more heat and turn hopefully into gas so we can heat things up again. It just starts taking every ounce of heat because now we're operating in heavy duty mode. When we're in AC, Everything is very simple. It just operates like a normal AC for the most part, and life is good. If it needs to cool the battery meanwhile, it can do that. Just send that high pressure and then drop it at the battery, and life is good. There's also one last mode that is mostly used for preconditioning the cabin and preconditioning the battery. Before it does that, if there is frost build up on the outside condenser, the one in front of your radiator, it's actually gonna open everything. There's zero restriction in the system. And it's gonna just run the refrigerant around just to de-ice everything. At this point, there's no pressure drop, there's no air, there's nothing happening in the cabin. It's all happening just by the refrigerant under pressure, under high pressure and on high heat, just circulating around to warm everything up and de-ice things ready for Charging the, ba charging the battery to cool it down or to just start driving when it detects that there is frost present. And lastly, when the engine decides to come on, 
Let's say you are driving, you ran out of EV mode, turn on defrost, did a few things that cancels EV mode in the RAV4 Prime, it will immediately switch that three-way valve and now we are no longer using the heat pump system for the heating at all. The coolant is, is circling in the engine getting heated up, but until that happens, there's a PTC heater that supplies some heat until the coolant warms up, which cool, warms up pretty quick. And now the coolant that is heated by the engine is going in the heater core, it's heating the cabin, and life is good. I told you this was gonna be the most complicated um, HVAC system ever put in a car, and I hope this video was a little bit helpful in giving you a small idea of what's actually all these lines and all this mess when you look under the hood of a RAV4 Prime because it gets pretty intimidating if you ask me. But once you start understanding actually what's happening, it's all computer controlled. It's all, all these valves that create the restrictions and all that. There's multiple pressure sensors everywhere that the computer is watching the whole operation. They got a little war room going on and, and the computer is watching everything and seeing the outside temperature, seeing the pressure here, pressure there, what's going on everywhere and it actually controls everything. And then all of a sudden that war room gets a call from the high voltage battery. Hey man, we need to cool the battery. And all of a sudden, okay, let's send some hot Freon right that way to drop the pressure and cool the battery. So all of this is going on and look, the RAV4 Prime is very new. I can't with good conscience just come out and tell you this is a bulletproof system. You'll never have problems. Charge it wrong, you have a problem. Misuse it, you have a problem. They get in an accident where half of these components are damaged or mishandled or fixed by someone who don't know what they're doing, you're going to have problems. But if you keep things going without these issues, you should have no issues going from the Prius Prime, which really didn't have issues unless the car was in an accident or somebody who don't know what they're doing was fixed trying to fix it. You're not gonna have a problem, but I will say one thing about the RAV4 Prime that some owners will not gonna like. Every 80,000 miles, you gotta top off that Freon. Remember, when this car is gonna be 10, 15 years old and you're in Arizona and the, you have a little leak from the AC system, ah, I'll just open the windows. Well, you can't do that. Because remember, that refrigerant cools the battery. It's no longer air-cooled. So when your AC goes out in the RAV4 Prime, you must fix it. There is no way around it. Otherwise, you're gonna have problems and the car won't let you actually, you'll have codes, you'll have all kinds of problems. But the main thing is, it's a maintenance item. Every 80,000 miles, you have to top off the refrigerant. You gotta make sure that the system is operating at its peak performance because of the cooling of the battery. I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. I hope it was not too complicated. I tried to make things as simple as possible for everybody to grasp the idea, see how these complicated AC systems and HVAC systems work. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you missed some parts of this series, I will leave a link to that playlist right here so you can catch up or find a particular part that you'd like to watch again. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have a wonderful day.